Good afternoon, traders. Uh, this is Jason with MotiveWave. Welcome to today's webinar, MotiveWave's mobile app tablet mode. Uh, in this webinar, we'll be taking you through the new tablet mode and then taking user feedback at the end of the presentation. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to attend. And today's presentation will be approximately 25 minutes and there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. There should be a Q&A button on your Zoom controls where you'll be able to type in your questions and feedback. So go ahead and do that at any time. This webinar recording will be posted to our YouTube page and or the video tutorial section on our website. If you're watching this webinar on YouTube, please like, share and subscribe. And before we get into the content, I'm just going to go over a quick disclaimer with you. There's substantial risk of loss in trading commodity futures options, stocks, equities, indices, cryptocurrencies, and foreign exchange products. Futures and options trading has large potential reward, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of these risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the markets. And please do not trade with money you can't afford to lose. We've posted CFTC rule 4.41 for you to read. And I wanna mention that MotiveWave has a 14 day risk-free trial and you can sign up at MotiveWave.com. All right, before we get started, I'll just go over a quick overview. So the MotiveWave mobile app is currently in the beta testing stage. So this will not be the final product released to the public. The mobile app will be available on iOS and Android, and will likely tie your desktop license to the mobile app, which will determine the features available to you. Uh, because not all connections offer compatible APIs for mobile apps, we will have a limited number of connections. Uh, to start out, uh, we're going to have Rhythmic, CQG, Binance, Kraken, Coinbase, TD Ameritrade, and Oanda. We're also considering interactive brokers, and that may come at a later date. And for this presentation, I'm just going to be using an Android emulator. Uh, so this will just emulate an Android tablet. And if you're interested in joining the beta testing group, please email support at motivewave.com with the subject line testing group. Uh, please include the email address associated with your MotiveWave license key and the mobile operating system that you plan to test with. So that would be either iOS uh, or Android. And we ask that you please report bugs as you normally would. So you can do this by sending an email to support at motivewave.com, along with as much information as you can to reproduce the issue. Inclusion of pictures, uh, screen recordings are very much appreciated. Uh, and we really welcome feedback on our features and the usability of the app. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support.motivoid.com with any feature requests or feedback that you have. And I, and I also want to mention that when you're selected for the trading group, you will be emailed instructions on how to install uh, what's called the Google Firebase app. This Firebase app is mandatory as it allows us to grant you access to the app, install MotiveWave, and install updates to MotiveWave. So please follow those uh, email directions very carefully. For Android, the directions are pretty straightforward, but for iOS, there are a couple extra steps that may cause confusion. Um, you'll also need a Google account in order to sign up for the Firebase app. And once the Firebase app is installed, uh, it will send a message to us to request access. And approving access is a manual process, so please be patient as it won't be instantaneous. Um, and if you're on iOS uh, version 16, then you'll likely need to enable something called developer mode. So I'm just going to paste a link to the instructions in the Zoom chat window. So if you check out your Zoom chat, let me just paste this here now. So if you're running iOS uh, 16, then you may need to enable this developer mode. As far as I know, earlier versions of iOS don't seem to need this enabled. So it's just for our iOS 16 users. All right, so let's actually jump into the app now. So the new uh, mobile app tablet mode will attempt to detect your display resolution and determine if you're running a tablet. If it determines that you are, it will automatically start up the app uh, in this mode for new workspaces. If for some reason it starts up in the normal phone mode or you have an existing workspace that was already created, it will actually start you off into phone mode. So you can switch between tablet mode and phone mode uh, manually by going to the overflow menu. So that's these three vertical dots here in the far right uh, bottom corner. 
you can select general preferences. And on the general tab here, we have this application layout option. So you can set it to phone or tablet. And when you're in tablet mode, you have another option called dock here. And this is just going to allow you to set the tab location. So the tabs are, you know, chart tabs, DOM tabs, watch list tabs. So that's set to the top by default. The page bar location you can change as well. So pages are the home page down here in the bottom. So add accounts page. And then we have our toolbar location. So the toolbar is just this, this top toolbar up here with all your, your little options. Um, that location can be changed as well. All right, so I'll just close this now. And tabs uh, work just like the desktop application. So for example, you can click this little plus icon here and you can add a new tab. So you have the option to add a chart, watch list, DOM, order book, time and sales, accounts, balances, positions, orders, and the trade history. And if required, each tab will have its own preferences menu, which is this gear icon. So you can click this and you can go into that specific charts, chart preferences. And next to that, we have the ability to expand the tab full screen, just like on our desktop. So you can press these two arrows here and it's gonna go full screen on this chart. And we can press those arrows again and it's gonna return us back to the normal view. In tablet mode, we have the toolbar located up top here. And you can see we have our instrument selector, which is a wheel. So you can scroll this up and down or you can tap it to find your favorites, recent, or do a search here. Next to that, we have an undo and redo buttons. And over on the right side, uh, we have the chart crosshair, so that can be enabled. We also have the bar type dropdown, so you can set OHLC, candle, or line. After that, we have the auto scale button, uh, which most of you are all familiar with. And then we have the add study button. So you can click this. You can search up here for the name of the study or go through the various groups. After that, we have the add components menu. So you can either select one from your favorites or check out all the available options. So this can be scrolled and you can select any component that you want from here. After that, we have the bar size wheel slash selector. So you can uh, move this like a wheel up and down just like the instrument selector, or you can tap it, uh, select any one of your favorites or a custom bar size as well. This button right here will show or hide the orders on your chart. And this next button is the object viewer. Um, there's a little issue with the object viewer right now, so it's not displaying the objects. Objects, excuse me. Uh, so this will be your studies or your components. Uh, this should be fixed in the next release, though. And finally, at the very end, we have our general preferences menu, which is the gear icon. And the new tablet mode allows you to create your own pages, unlike the phone mode. Um, so if you'd like to create a new page, you can do so at the bottom by clicking this little plus icon here. And it's going to give us the option to either create a chart page or an account page. So if we wanted to create, you know, a four chart page, we could select it there. And then we could give it a name. We'll just call this one webinar. Click OK. And that's going to load up a new page for us. And if we actually want to duplicate a page, what we can do is select this icon down in the bottom right corner, the page over top of the other page. That's just gonna duplicate our webinar page and call it webinar one. And if you want to rearrange any of these pages, all you have to do is tap and hold on them and then drag and you can reorder them. And if you'd like to delete a page, uh, just go over top of that page tab here and just swipe left. And it's going to say, would you like to uh, delete webinar one? And we're going to say yes. So the let's head back over to the home page. Uh, the mobile app docking framework works just like our desktop app. So this means you can add tabs, move them wherever you want, and then resize them to your liking. So for example, we could add a new chart tab 
by clicking the plus icon, selecting chart, it's going to create a new ES chart for us. And if we want to move this beside the other charts, we have two charts in a DOM. Um, what we need to do is we need to press and hold this tab for about a second or so. So it's not exactly like the desktop. The desktop, you can just click and drag. This one, you need to tap and hold for about a second. And then it's going to allow you to move it. So we could have side-by-side -side charts just like that. And if you want to resize, excuse me, if you want to resize the chart window, simply tap and drag on the divider, just like this, just as you would on the desktop. If you find the divider isn't large enough and you're unable to tap and drag easily, then you can actually go into the preferences menu. So we'll just do that right now. And on the dock tab here, we can set the divider width. So if 15 pixels isn't enough, we could do something like 25 pixels, apply those changes, and now you can see we'll have more room here for our finger to tap and drag on those dividers. Um, since screen real estate is at a premium on tablets, we also have the option to remove the divider space entirely by clicking this little button down here. See in the bottom right corner of the application, if we press this, that's going to remove the divider space entirely. Um, this allows you know, me to make an adjustment really quickly by enabling it. And then I can disable that again, and we're going to remove our divider space completely. And just a, just a quick note that when you do this, you also lose the tabs up top. So let's say we had an ES and an MES chart back here. Once we disable this, we're going to remove the option to select those specific chart tabs. And if you'd like to delete a tab, uh, you can just do so by uh, left swiping, just like we did earlier on the page. So we could just click this tab here, left swipe on it, and it's just going to ask us if we want to delete. We can say yes. We could delete this MES one as well. And if we've uh, messed up our layout and want to start fresh with the default layout, we can just go to our overflow menu here and select reset layout. And that's just going to reset it back to the default layout that we have. And let me quickly uh, show you how I might set up tablet mode for actual trading. And then we can get into our, our Q&A and feedback stuff. So how I would probably set this up was I probably want the DOM, the full height. So I would actually remove these trades and orders panels. I would probably remove the watch list as well. This will just take a quick second. So now we have a full height DOM. Uh, personally, I'm okay with the 15 pixel divider width. So I'd probably change that back, apply that. And then I would add maybe my orders down below. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and add a watch list. So you could add our indices watch list, tap and hold, and then we can drag that below. And maybe we just want to see a small set. So we could we could edit this watch list by clicking the gear icon here. And then maybe I could remove uh, some of these options here. Click apply setting and then resize this. And this watch list is actually linked. So if I click MNQ, it's going to bring up an MNQ chart here. So that would be nice. And then we also may want to see our positions and our orders here. So we can quickly switch between these different tabs to see our positions and orders. And for the DOM, uh, we already had a webinar on the DOM, but I'll just quickly go through maybe what I would like to see. So I would likely remove the PL. I would remove the combined bid and ask. I like to see my um, bid and ask columns separate. So let's move those over there and resize them just a slight bit. Maybe shrink the price column. And I also like to see the at bid 
and at ask columns. So these are just showing us the recent trades that happen on the bid and on the offer. And that's what I usually like to see in my trading. And then what we could do is just resize this. We could shrink this, maybe decrease the width of the volume column if we wanted to a little bit, maybe the orders column. And then resize like that. And then for me personally, I would like to see maybe you know, a five minute or a nonlinear chart here for my trigger chart. So what we could do is we could change this to a candle, uh, maybe set it to a five minute chart. And this would be something like my trigger chart. And then what we could do is set up another ES chart, but set this one to 15 minutes. So kind of a, a higher time frame view. And we could also reduce the bar width as well. So we see a little bit more bars on our chart. And for this 15 minute overview chart, I may want to add something like a volume profile. So I can do that by clicking this uh, add study button, go to our order flow tab, and then we're gonna find our volume imprint study. On the options tab, we're gonna set this to uh, one day, since we wanna see one day profiles. Go back to our settings. Maybe we want to only wanna see about three profiles. Display, that looks good. Um, what else am I missing here? Oh, the align option. The align, I'd probably wanna set this to start a bar. And display, I'd probably actually wanna limit the max width to something like, I don't know, 250 pixels. And we can add this now. It's just going to go and fetch the historical tick data and then load it up in the chart. This may take a few seconds. And there we go. So we have our our uh, excuse me, our volume profiles here. And we what we could do is we could add another study, which I searched for earlier, and we can see our recents here is the OHLC study. So I could add that, uh, five prints, that's fine. And that would be kind of our, our mid-level overview chart. And finally, what else I would like to see would be probably just a, a simple daily chart. So we go ahead, add our one day, set this to candles. I, I prefer to see candles myself. And then we'll reduce the bar width to something, yeah, like five or six pixels. And then we can see kind of our high level overview and we can quickly switch over to our 15 minute overview. And then from there, we'd, we'd maybe place trades off of our five minutes. So, you know, if we wanted to see a footprint chart, we could do that by adding the volume imprint study again, set this to bid ask, uh, set the imprint count that can be just left at 20. And we'll just go ahead and add this now. And if I uh, resize the bar width here, and I'm going to actually remove the candles since we have our um, volume imprint study on. And in order to see the text, I'm actually going to have to disable auto scale mode. So I'll go up and uh, click the auto scale button here. That's going to disable it. So that allows me to pan the chart around. And then I'm going to click and drag on the time axis. The This is a little finicky because I'm running this Android emulator. So sometimes the, the clicks aren't really working for me every single time, but that shouldn't really be an issue with, you know, something like an iPad or an Android tablet. So then we could, you know, we could execute off of our five minute chart here with the DOM uh, full height. And the reason I wanted the DOM full height uh, is because what we may want to do is pop up the trade panel here. So you click this little up arrow and then we have access to buy and sell uh, at market buttons here. We have our time and force and our quantity. We can buy and sell at the bid or buy and sell at the offer. And so this way we can just really quickly, if we really quickly want to enter, we can just select buy market and then drop our trade panel down. And then we can watch from the DOM. 
And if we want to place uh, limit orders on the DOM, all you have to do is just tap and hold on, let's say, the ask column. And it's just going to say, you know, here's your price, 37, 34, 50. And you can set a limit order, stop order, or any various OCO orders. All right. So that's likely how I would use this layout in my style of trading. But, you know, everybody has their own needs. And hopefully you can see from this short example, uh, you know, the new tablet mode allows for complex and powerful workspaces. I think personally that it rivals a lot of desktop trading applications with its functionality. So that's all I really wanted to show today for a new mobile app tablet mode. So if you have any feature requests, any feedback, questions, uh, please hit the Q&A button on your Zoom controls and let us know now. All right, Joe, do we have any questions? We have one here from Mike Liggins. I heard TDA. Is that only for equities? Um, that would be um, our connections would support the asset classes as listed on our homepage under the connections tab. In the case of TDA, I believe it's um, stocks and options. Yeah, that's right. Although we do not currently have options set up for our mobile app. Correct. So we won't, we won't have an option chain yet, although that may come in the future. We have a question here for Dennis Mooney, from Dennis Mooney. For each device, I assume we need a new email confirmation from Motorway before we can download the app, for example, or IE, that is, the iPad. Uh, I believe with iOS, you do would need a new email. I think it's set up per device, so that's correct. Yeah, Dennis, just send us a, an email and we can confirm that for you. Igor asks, is it even feasible to add a custom study? Uh, Igor, no, sorry, not at this time. We cannot add custom studies uh, because they're written in Java. And Joe, if you want to expand on that at all, I'm not sure if you have anything to add there. Um, yeah, because the, um, currently the studies are custom studies and strategies are written using Java SDK, the mobile app, uh, does not support Java. So, um, there would have to be some other support there for some other, uh, scripting language and most likely you'd have to rewrite all those Java studies and strategies, um, according to that scripting language, but we don't have anything planned in the immediate future for custom support and strategy, custom study and strategy support. Cool. I have one question from Anonymous and they're asking, will this support point and figure charting? And the answer to that is yes, we should already support point and figure charting. So if you wanna get into the bar size selector here, you just tap this button, go over to custom and on your bar size type set this to point and figure and then from here you can set the box size and the reversal and if this is a bar size that you use uh, frequently you can just click add to favorites and now you can see point and figure five three is added to our favorites okay any other ones joe Next on the list, Anonymous asks, where are you getting the detailed data? What's the cost per month? That would come from your... That come from your, your connection. So we Correct. don't we don't provide data. Uh, MotorWave doesn't provide data at all. So as mentioned earlier, let me just get you a quick list. I had that written down somewhere else. Uh, so currently you need to have an account at either Rhythmic, CQG, Binance, Kraken, Coinbase, TD Ameritrade, or Oanda in order to use the app. Uh, Lisa asks, uh, can you place limit orders directly on the chart? So if you tap and hold the chart, you can select new order. And then it's going to bring up a little order panel here. So you can set a limit price 
and then you can send the order. You can also select this little icon right here and it's gonna bring up that, that little trade panel. So that would be how you could place orders uh, directly from the chart. Mike Liggins, uh, thank you very much for the comment. Yeah, it is, it's very powerful. It is nearly like the desktop. Uh, same to you, Peter, thank you. Yep, um, works great in iPad and Android. Um, depending how much screen real estate you want. I believe the Apple lineup of iPads uh, give you more options there. Uh, Could okay. be wrong. Sorry, Joe, who is this for? Uh, Peter Scott. Oh, okay, Peter, okay. Uh, Brian is also asking, what are the general hardware specs needed uh, for the tablet to run comfortably? We don't have enough tablets to test on. Um, I've tested a a tablet that is, I believe it is now three or five years old. Uh, I just a, the regular iPad and it ran it just fine. Um, obviously, if you're talking about like the iPad Pros with the M1s and M2s, those would absolutely run this no problem whatsoever. But I don't believe we have any kind of Samsung tablet to test with. But I would say anything within the last few years should be no problem. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I had a and, I have a two year old iPad, no, no issues. I and it would also probably depend on what kind of studies you were running, as well. Also, I think we answered that other question earlier, Brian, which is importing the Java strategies, not not currently supported. Robert asks, is the mobile app going to have simulated function? Uh, Robert, we talked about this a while ago, and we initially came to the conclusion that it wouldn't make a lot of sense for um, a simulated account. Uh, this was because we were thinking about it from a phone perspective where, you know, if, you're, if your phone screen shuts off or whatever, you may be disconnected from your connection and you would kind of need it, that connection to be connected all the time in order for it to simulate those trades. However, now that we have a tablet mode, that, that may change that may change, hey, Joe, because I could see someone running a tablet for, you know, half an hour, an hour, two hours at a time. So we'll definitely, um, we'll add that back onto the feature request list, and we'll definitely consider that in the future. How do you, how do we download the app? Um, you'd send us an email, support at motivewave.com. The details are on that slide. Subject, yeah. put in testing group, along with your email address, so do with your license key, your requested operating system. And then we will respond uh, with an email with further instructions. Anonymous says the point and figure charts seem to be wrong when I last trade them. I haven't looked at it as of lately. Was the issue? Uh, sorry, Anonymous, was this desktop or mobile? Maybe you can let us know whether that point and figure issue was desktop or mobile. There were a couple changes recently to the desktop that may have fixed the issue that you're thinking of. And if it hasn't been, uh, just email us support at motivewave.com motive and we'll hopefully get that sorted out for you. Dennis, thank you for the compliment. Your feedback's always appreciated and welcomed. Yes, thank you everybody that has provided feedback. We really appreciate it. Um, so Igor asks, is, is there a way to sync a chart with an existing analysis stored in the cloud? <laughs> that is something that we would like to add. I don't know if that's something that's gonna be added in version one when we launch, but that was one of our top features discussed. So ideally in the future at some point we'd like the cloud workspaces to be able to be synced between you know your desktop and your mobile application tony asks is there planned support for forex.com um we don't currently have plans to 
add any other connections at the moment, but that's not saying that they won't come. So what we can do is I'll just add a feature request for forex.com. Thanks for the feedback, by the way. Any more, Joe? Um, Jared asks, will there be exit strategies added to the order panel? That is a very good question. Uh, that's something that we could look into. Um, we didn't really discuss this in depth yet. The We would like any exit strategy to be supported on server side because we don't want to rely on say a phone or tablet to be running to execute that that strategy so we'd want every every function of it, of it to be executed on a server like server side orders if that makes sense peter asks do we need to purchase a separate license for the tablet version we haven't yet decided on how everything's going to work in that way but we believe that any, uh, I guess, user on a lease or paid version of Motive Wave with updated supports, I believe this will not be a separate purchase. It should be included. Um, that has not been finalized. I'll just say that now, but that's what we're that's what way we're leaning right now. Okay, hey, Logan asks, how do you actually get it to connect to the app and download? If you're asking um, how to get to connect to a broker or a feed, that would be when you initially uh, start the app. It will uh, prompt you to select uh, from one of our supported connections. And then you go ahead and put your username and password and connect that way. Um, and download. The download would be, download instructions would be sent to you uh, when you send us that email, um, the relevant links will be sent to you. Um, you will have to, what will happen is you have the Firebase app installed. And then from Firebase, when you take a look at that, you will see the available, um, the available, the latest available version for you to try. And you can install it that way. But you have to send us an email first. Perfect. And Mike asked, do you have a time frame for being able to run in non-developer mode? And Joe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this developer mode issue is because we're running the beta through the Google Firebase app. And once the application is on, say, the Apple Store, we wouldn't need uh, to enable developer mode. That's correct. And I think... Um... Apple reinforced developer mode with the latest iOS release because on the previous one, I didn't, um, if I recall correctly, I didn't necessarily have to go into developer mode. Yeah. And Mike, you had another question, which was, do you have a target launch date? Not at the moment. Um, I think we're getting fairly close uh, to what we'd like to see in version 1.0 launch. We definitely need, to, we would like to have more users uh, you know, testing, finding bugs, providing feedback. We, again, we love to hear your critiques. So <laughs> if you want to trash the mobile app, just send us a support uh, email to support at motivewave.com. Uh, we, we always appreciate the feedback that you give us. Uh, anything else, Joe? Got a few more here. Igor yeah. asks, uh, performance-wise, a native M1 M2 may run faster compared to the Java-based desktop app. That's definitely possible. Possible, but not confirmed. Yeah. Um, we haven't done any testing. I, I believe some code in certain areas were simplified in the mobile app. So I, I'd say that that's it's possible. Yeah, it's also a much lighter app, right? Mm -hmm. I keep that in mind. Yeah, less functionality, even though it has an, an absolute ton of functionality for a mobile app, it does have less than the desktop. Anonymous asks, what's the time frame on bringing IB connection? Um, we have absolutely no time frame for that right now. Uh, I know that that would be 
for us, that is, you know, if we're going to add another one, it would likely be interactive brokers. Um, I would say there's a, a fairly good chance that that's going to get done. It may not happen in version one release. I guess we'll see kind of, kind of how that goes. Igor, um, thank you very much for the comment, the feedback. Uh, Igor states that uh, he's compared to other mobile applications and finds um, ours very impressive. So that's appreciated. Yeah, we, um, we worked hard on this one, especially development, um, to make sure that um, uh, it was uh, ahead of the competition in many ways. And then we have another question just coming in late here. How do I get access uh, for testing? And we've answered this a couple of times, but you may have just popped in late. Send an email to support at motivo.com. Uh, subject line testing group, uh, send us the email address associated with your license key, and then let us know whether you're going to use iOS or Android for testing, because we need to send out a, a different email for iOS than we do for Android. Okay, we have one final question here from um, Brian. Uh, if we're looking at a potential scripting language for the mobile app, will you eventually sync the same scripting language to be supported in a desktop version? If the mobile, I would Assume if the mobile version eventually does allow some sort of scripting language for custom studies and um, strategies, that it may also be available on the desktop app. What'll probably happen is if you have any existing custom studies or strategies uh, written in Java, you, you may have to at some point port them over um, as a possibility. I don't have complete verification of that, but I would think that would be the case. Yeah, these are just kind of general discussions that we've had yeah. um, about adding an easier scripting language to MotiveWave. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anonymous. Great product. Thank you. If there's any other okay. questions or feedback, just let us know. Any critiques, anything you'd like to see changed with the layout, the UI, the execution, uh, you guys uh, can just email us support at motorwave.com and we'll get those into our feature request list. So it looks like we have most of the questions answered. Hey, Joe. I don't have any outstanding ones here. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so again, I'll throw up this slide. So if you'd like to join the beta testing group, you can just send us an email. Uh, and we also want to mention, obviously, that MotiveWave has a 14-day risk-free trial, and you can sign up at motivewave.com. And if you have any other questions, again, email support at motivewave.com. And thank you, everybody, for attending the webinar today. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to attend, and have a great evening.